Oh, hi. I didn't see you come in. Uh, so yeah, today we are going to talk about um, the uh, how we construct a two-coordinate system uh, or two observer diagram and how we actually get the, uh, the the coordinates themselves set up. So it's basically the beginning of R5 and how we actually set this up. So without further ado, let's let's get to it. Um, so the main idea is this. We want to try to, uh, to basically create um, a diagram where we can look at two different uh, how two different set of events happen in two different uh, uh, frames. Um, so we all know how to do a space-time diagram, hopefully. We remember space-time diagrams just have a T and an X axis, all right, just like that. Um, and they, uh, they basically allow us to uh, show something, um, how something, uh, how some, how something basically be uh, represented um, uh, in space and time. We only do it in X. We don't really pay attention to uh, the the, uh, the 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 Y or Z, and that's mostly because um, uh, this can be extended to Y and Z, but it just makes it more complicated. So we just want to start with just looking in one dimension. We'll kind of stay in that one dimension the whole time. Uh, so that we can actually get this. Um, so first, let's look at uh, the um, let's look at how we may let's look at how we can actually uh, um, construct the our second frame. All right, so we already have this T and X. We can plot things on T and X. Uh, what we want to do is we want to think of a second a second thing. So let's say we have a second clock. That's traveling along uh, in our frame. So we're sitting here. We're sitting at a bus stop, um, and uh, a person with a clock comes flying by, um, and the the person with the clock has their clock. They have their clock, which is uh, which is moving along in X to the right. All right, and again for the clock, the person has the clock. The clock is just moving in time. Uh, the person doesn't see the clock moving. If you sit on a bus and you're looking at a clock, you're looking at your watch, your watch doesn't look like it's moving. It looks like it's staying at the exact same place. That's the exact same thing for this. For the person in the bus, the clock is staying still at and just staying at the same position all the time. And the only thing that's moving is time. Just like if I look at my watch while I'm sitting in the bus stop, uh, my, is, my watch is just going forward in time and is also not moving in X. Um, but now we want to basically be able to create a, 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 a way of relating this to the, this um, frame to this frame. Now, what we normally do with our T uh, frame is we put kind of these dashes and we'll say, you know, like, let's say this is time equals one second. Okay. Um, what we want to know is how do we create the same dashes, all right, along the prime axis and put them at the right spacing. Now the 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 kind of um, gut reaction or the thing you just want to do is you want to just kind of measure this distance and just say, oh, if I have that distance, I should be able to draw that same distance over here and that should be separated by the same amount. It turns out that is actually not correct. That's not how it works. You cannot just use the spacing that you have from this, uh, that you have from, from, from this uh, spacing between these dashes, you can't just have that same spacing on this dash. It turns out that it doesn't actually give you the right answer. Um, but what we can do is we can realize this. Um, all the points along uh, uh, along a, um, uh, the, the t-axis here are, it turns out, space-time intervals. So if we look at this one second, we know the space-time inter interval is just delta s. Um, it's just delta t minus Delta x, uh, my, uh, so, um, sorry, minus t squared, minus delta x squared. All right. Um, we see immediately that for all points on the t-axis, the x is zero, and so that these are actually all space-time intervals. So in other words, all the things that are on the t-axis are also space-time intervals. All right. Um, that's useful because it turns out. Um, along this axis, there will also be uh, dashes 
And they will also be space-time intervals because some point here is going to be, let's say, delta s squared, uh, delta s prime squared. That's a, a space-time interval. Um, that's equal to delta t prime squared minus delta x prime squared. Again, this is all on the prime coordinate. All right. Uh, but you notice this is on the t prime axis. So in this coordinate, this also has an x prime of zero. So also the po all the dashes that we have along here are also space-time intervals. And one thing you hopefully remember is that space-time intervals are the same across all frames. So if we have a delta s squared equal to one second squared, which is the same as a delta s equal to one second, um, then this delta s prime that's one second is also the same space-time interval. So basically the space-time intervals are the same across all things. What changes is, is that if we try to write this delta s prime in terms of x-coordinates, in, in terms of not-primed coordinates, so we have it in terms of prime coordinates, let's write it in terms of not-primed coordinates. Well, we know that the delta s prime and delta s are the same. All right. Um, and so we also know that if we do this, let's look at the squared value. Um, we also know that delta s prime squared is equal to delta s squared, and we already know what delta s squared is in terms of our coordinates. It's delta t squared minus delta x squared. So this point of one second, which is a space-time interval, is at is at the position where delta t squared minus delta x squared is equal to one second. Now it turns out that if we plot the place where this is true, everywhere that that's true is, uh, is on what's called a hyperbola. Um, and so if we take from here and draw a hyperbola, it looks something like this, all right? Everywhere on that hyperbola is a place where the delta is where the, is where the space-time interval is one second. Okay, um, and so we know that in this case right here, since this is also a space-time interval, this also is one second, and this is actually how we're going to calibrate this. So we're going to basically draw a hyperbola, all right, and then we're going to, um, if we mark this one at one second, wherever that hyperbola crosses over on the t prime axis, we're going to call that as t prime is equal to one second, all right. And so now we have a way of basically calibrating our prime axis. And so there are going to be more hyperbolas here. Sorry, that's not a very good one. Hyperbolas here, hyperbolas here. Um, and then those points, so I've annoyingly done a third as much. So this is what, a third of a second, 0 0.33 seconds. And this is 0 0.66 seconds. Um, those are also 0 0.33 and 0 0.66 seconds in the prime axis. And so this is going to be the way that we're going to basically uh, calibrate, as it's called, our prime axis, is by actually uh, setting up these, um, these, these uh, dashes based on these hyperbolas. Now this is actually really um, uh, quite uh, difficult to do in practice, uh, because it's really hard to do what I'm trying to do, which is draw a hyperbola uh, by hand. But the good news is, is we have what's called hyperbolic graph paper. We have graph paper that has hyperbolas all over it uh, that start at the um, origin. And so we're going to use that hyperbolic graph paper to actually construct these, uh, these, um, these two observer diagrams. And I'll do another video showing how we actually do this. But this gives you the justification as to why we should do it. And it basically is because the space-time interval is the same in all places. Um, and that's the whole idea behind it. I hope this video was helpful. Uh, um, and uh, I hope that uh, I can that, that this uh, gives you some idea about how to do this. And I will see you uh, in class.